Let's head into this newscast with the latest coming in from South Korea. South Koreans went to polling stations wearing masks and gloves to cast their votes to elect the country's 21st National Assembly amid the coronavirus outbreak, which has infected thousands in the country and has been pulling the economy down. Now, voters across South Korea who have gathered to cast their vote are being checked for their body temperature and they must stand one meter apart from each other. Voters also have to wash their hands, use gloves and masks while casting their vote as social distancing has become the mandated norm during this pandemic. While the critics of the government feared chaos during the polls, voters calmly queued up outside booths to practice their constitutional right. Reports from Seoul suggest that more than 11 million people have already cast their votes. It is record turnout of 26% where even 18-year-olds are being allowed to vote for the first time ever. Reports also suggest that army staff of 555,000 have also been deployed to ensure safe and smooth elections. 기본적으로 저희가 그냥 그 앞으로 남은 3년 잘 진행될 수 있는 방향으로 투표를 하고자 지금 아침 일찍 나왔습니다. 출근하기 전에. A total of 35 parties have registered for the election and 300 seats are up for polls in this season. The race is likely to be between ruling Democratic Party and the opposition Conservative Party. It is also being said that the government's handling of the coronavirus outbreak will be determining the outcome of this election. Positive cases of coronavirus have surpassed 10,000 and the deadly virus has killed more than 220 people in South Korea. The country has chosen to go ahead with the election. Patients who are undergoing treatment for the virus have also been given an opportunity to cast their ballot through mail. The country's strategy in containing the virus spread has been hailed as quote unquote exemplary democratic response. As of today, the Moon Jae-in government has tested more than 250,000 people for the virus. But there are still close to 2,800 active coronavirus cases with at least 55 needing critical care in South Korea. And for more details and a sense of ground zero, let's quickly go across to our correspondent, Bruce Harrison, who's joining us live at this hour from Seoul. A very warm welcome to you, Bruce. Now, at a time when many countries have postponed their election, South Korea is going ahead. It's the first election in a coronavirus era. Have people even stepped out to cast their vote? And how are polling booths managing the turnout in times of social distancing? Alpancha, I'm outside of a polling station right now and you can see a slow trickle of people coming in and out. This is actually an old gymnasium, part of a church complex here in Seoul that they've opened for voting. And it's hard to see, but all along this pathway there are blue arrows. And as you mentioned, social distancing is key for this vote. And these arrows are one meter apart and you're required to stand on these arrows as you queue to get into the polling station. Now I stood by the door for a while and there was the occasional moment from staff telling these people, hey, get back on your arrows, you're getting too close to each other. But by and large, people have been following the directions closely. The temperatures are checked, you sanitize your hands, then you put on gloves, then you get your ballot and you cast your vote. Then you're out, toss the gloves back on the street. The process has been fairly seamless so far. People have been polite, cordial and patient as they wait to vote despite this epidemic here in South Korea. Right. Uh, Bruce, the coronavirus remains a huge factor in these elections, no doubt. Will President Moon Jae-in's ruling Democratic Party of Korea get a boost from the government's swift response to the pandemic, or will it be on the back foot over its handling of the economy? Well, those are the two key election issues right now, COVID-19 and the economy. Moon Jae-in 
if anything, is is lucky to an extent that the election is coming right now and the country has been able to pull it off because, by and large, his government has received a positive response from the public over its handling of the coronavirus outbreak here. So he really wants the public to vote their confidence in his government at the polls today based on how they've reacted to COVID-19. At the same time, yeah, the economy, like I said, a key issue. The economy was sluggish before COVID-19, so you can't put it all on the coronavirus outbreak uh, for small businesses closing and, and other issues here um, with work. So Moon is going to face a challenge in that. And the opposition party is really going to blast him saying Moon screwed up the economy before COVID-19. Uh, he didn't shut down the borders with China, which led to the outbreak here in the first place, further hurting the economy. So a lot of experts are saying it's going to be close based on those two issues. Right. Bruce. You know, let's now focus on those issues that are dominating this election. You've just mentioned two very crucial ones, be it women's safety or the rights of the North Koreans stuck north of the DMZ. What are the key issues now dominating these elections, apart from the ones you mentioned? And could the regional parties or the smaller players also play a crucial role? Well, North Korea is always going to be an issue to some extent during an election. Right now, obviously, a bit on the back burner when you see the coronavirus outbreak here as well as a struggling economy. Uh, but the opposition party is probably also going to take an opportunity uh, to uh, attack Moon for what has been, uh, by and large, an unsuccessful event to, to negotiate with the North Koreans and lead to any kind of breakdown of their nuclear program or any kind of business across the border. Uh, so they will certainly needle the, the ruling party for that. Uh, but it's really going to fall uh, to the economy and, uh, and to, the, to the coronavirus uh, um, response. Uh, more broadly, health care yeah. here in South Korea um, is always a key issue. The Koreans typically hold their government accountable to maintain a high standard of care. And they've seen that throughout this outbreak. So that'll bode well for the ruling party. Absolutely. And in fact, they're being lauded at the global stage as far as uh, South Korea's response is concerned towards coronavirus. Now, last but not the least, uh, Bruce, this election is also being touted as a referendum on the reforms recently passed in South Korea. These electoral reforms are giving the 18-year-olds the right to vote for the very first time. Could these 18-year-olds prove to be the deal breaker since the young are quite fed up of inequality and the wage gap? This would certainly be an opportunity for them to to take their voices to vote on those issues, uh, especially considering the high youth unemployment rate here. Uh, but we won't know exactly the demographic turnout for these elections uh, for at least probably 24 hours based on the early voting that took place last Friday and Saturday to try and thin the lines here on Wednesday. We saw an extremely high turnout, uh, and part of that could have been the young vote. Um, a lot of young people right now throughout the coronavirus outbreak um, have perhaps been less responsive to the government's measures when it comes to social distancing as well as hygiene. And that's, you know, based on the fact that 27 percent of cases here are linked to people in their 20s and younger. So it's unclear how keen they are to support Moon Jae-in in this initiative to boost his party ahead of the next presidential election. Uh, but they certainly have an opportunity they didn't before in a country that struggles uh, with finding young people jobs and uh, getting their voices heard. Right. We're already being told that 11 million people have already cast their vote. Let's hope South Koreans actually turn up in full force to elect their new government on that note. Thank you so much, Bruce, for bringing us all those details live from Seoul.